Hey, and welcome back. I have a great appreciation for vintage drums, and when it comes to snares, there are a few drums that seem to be universally accepted as the industry standard for recording in live situations. Some of these drums, like the Black Beauty or Bell Brass snares, come with the price tag that reflects their reputation and certainly puts a damper on the ability for many to acquire a drum like this. But there are also a variety of drums that both have affordable price tags and a reputation much more like the drums I mentioned previously. One of these drums is the Ludwig Acrylite, an aluminum shell snare that Ludwig has produced since the early 60s. These were originally introduced into the market as a student drum, but they quickly became the choice of pro players in need of a dry, cracking snare tone. Due to the mass production of this drum throughout the last 60 years, I find these popping up all the time on sites like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and other local avenues. Of course, if you go over to sites like Reverb and eBay, you'll find plenty as well, but with a price tag that more reflects the current collector's market. When I was in high school, I remember buying my first Acrylite at my local music store, Henry's Music, for just $75. At this time, these drums didn't have the same allure and appreciation that we have for them today, and I actually made this drum one of my first DIY drum projects by spray painting it in a glitter green finish. I'm certainly a bit wiser now and ended up stripping that finish off and still use this drum regularly in my studio. I've set it up with wood hoops and it works great for low tuned earthy drum sounds. Since then, I've picked up a dozen or more Acrylites from different eras and cleaned them up and flipped them online, usually buying these drums for anywhere between $50 to $150 and selling them for anywhere between $150 to $250. Recently, when I was down in Kenosha visiting my friend Tim Baltus, I made a stop at his local music around and saw this Acrylite on the shelf for just $150. I had a gift card that I had gotten during the holidays, so I was able to buy this drum for just $100 out of pocket. This specific Acrylite was a little unique compared to others I've owned before, mostly because it didn't feature that same flat gray finish, but a black sparkle finish that Ludwig marketed as Black Galaxy. This specific run of Acrylites were made in the 1990s and featured a black and white badge, along with many of the same features from the original Acrylites, like the P85 throw off and butt plate along with the internal muffler. If you do a search online, you'll see that many of the drum aficionados will refer to this specific drum not as a Black Galaxy Acrylite, but as Blackrylites. Now I know you're probably thinking, why in the world would I need two different Acrylites? And while I can agree with you, it may appear a bit redundant, and I don't want to become one of those collectors that has the same thing in every finish, but hear me out for just one second. The Acrylite is such a workhorse drum, and it's so well revered for its versatility, that in my situation as a recording drummer, there's an argument to be made for keeping more than one on hand, and to have them set up in different ways. My original Acrylite is great in the way I use it currently, as an earthy, low tuned drum, but I also love the snappy, crisp sound of these drums when tuned up and muffled a bit. So my plan is to keep this drum set up in that manner. I knew that I wanted to replace the original throw off with a newer variation made by Ludwig, and if you've watched my video on fixing up a whole lot of Ludwigs last year, you may remember me talking about my light disappointment with this newer P88 throw off, because although the throw off is fantastic and fits the original hole pattern, the butt plate on the other hand doesn't match up with the hole pattern, and it's only sold in a set. But after this video came out, one of my good friends from Chicago, Andrew Green, actually sent me a message to let me know about a solution he had discovered for this problem. Hey Mike, here's the uh, Ludwig butt plate that I was talking about, and you can, uh, I mean, obviously these are the, the threaded holes, but if we take off the gaskets, you can see that we have the threaded hole there, and here we have a gasket retention hole. And that's for the little tab on the bottom of the gasket. I think it's just super glued on there. But if you drill with a number 29 drill bit these holes and then tap them for 832, they fit the right size for the vintage Ludwig butt plate assembly. And it works. Hope this helps. So after getting this message from Andrew, I decided to not only order another P88 throw off for this drum, but also order the tap tools needed to add additional threaded holes into the butt plate to make it work with my new Acrylite. Within a couple of days, all these parts had showed up, 
and I was able to get started with getting this drum cleaned up and back together. I decided to soak all of the smaller metal hardware bits in WD-40 for a while to get any light rust and build up off of them. Next, I was able to shift my attention over to cleaning up the shell and hoops. For the hoops, I used aluminum foil to remove any rust and build up, and then used some metal polish to bring back that nice new sheen to them. For the shell, I just did a brief cleaning with some soapy water and a microfiber cloth, but as I got to cleaning the shell, I noticed a light rattle as I would strike it. After a bit of investigating, I discovered the grommet holding the badge onto the shell was a bit loose, allowing the metal badge to rattle when the shell would vibrate. I took the shell upstairs and used the end of a small ball-peen hammer to tighten the grommet holding the badge on until there was no play left in the connection. And after tapping the shell to check, I could hear that the rattle was now gone and could move on to the rest of this drum. Next, I moved on to re-drilling the butt plate. I removed the rubber gaskets prior to coming upstairs, and you can see the two gasket retention holes that we'd be drilling out to accept the bolts. After I had it in my vise, I added some tape to the drill bit in order to have a reference for how deep to drill, and once I drilled out both holes, I then used a tap and T-handle to add threads to those holes, and after that, this butt plate could now be used with the current hole pattern on this shell. I did have to widen the original holes on the shell to allow the newer bolts to pass through, but other than that, everything worked great, and then I could get this secured onto the shell again. After letting the hardware soak for a day, I removed it from the WD-40 and dried it out on a towel. It was certainly a bit cleaner than before, but I noticed the white tension rod washers were a bit discolored and not nearly as pristine as the rest of this drum was now set to be. I decided to order some new tension rod washers, and with this drum having the black theme, it only seemed fitting to use black washers here. I found this pack of 50 on Sweetwater for well under $10, and in addition to the washer removing metal on metal contact between the tension rod and hoop horizontally, they also featured a vertical component to keep the tension rod from making contact as it goes through the hoop. This is a nice feature, but really I ordered these just because they were cheaper and came in bulk. I got all the metal components like lugs, throw off, and muffler back on the shell, and then after going through my stock of drum heads, I was able to add heads, hoops, and then begin adding tension rods while greasing them up with white lithium grease as I added each rod. When it came time to add snare wires, I also cut some of this black nylon ribbon that I had to keep the black color theme unified throughout the drum. And just like that, this drum was all finished and ready to be taken over for a demo.
So as you just heard, this drum has a wide variety of tunings where it sounds great, and it will certainly be one I call on often in my studio. Although I have two of these Acrylites in my personal collection, they definitely each have their own sound and use, and it will certainly be easier than drastically changing one to get it to sound more like the other. I'm a huge fan of the history of drums, and this drum tells the story of not only an iconic Ludwig snare drum, but a period in time where they took a slightly different approach. And if I'm going to own two Acrylites, they might as well have a different visual appeal as well, right? When it comes to this newer throw-off, I'm a huge fan of it, and I love how Ludwig recognizes the market for parts that work with their vintage drums. For all the things I love about vintage drums, the hardware is not one of them, and to have options like the P88 really makes these older drums more reliable out on gigs or in the studio. The happy accident with the butt plate being able to be modified to work with this drum was such a blessing in disguise. And I have four or five more of these butt plates in my stock that I'll probably do this same modification to so they can be useful on some of my other older Ludwig drums. If I had to guess, I don't think Ludwig planned it out this way with those retention holes working for the whole pattern on the older style butt plate, but if anyone from Ludwig sees this video, I think adding a second pair of threaded holes to this butt plate would be so helpful for others out there. I know there's thousands of other Ludwig Acrylite owners and enthusiasts out there, so if you're one of them, leave me a comment down below telling me about how you came across yours or how you use it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. And until next time, thanks.